Hey everyone, it's Dr. Apolly. So One Piece is incredibly rich in real life symbolism and influence. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if every location and character had some sort of religious, cultural, or historical symbolism packed into it. If I were to give my honest opinion, I would say that Oda is likely an atheist who just finds all this historical and cultural and religious stuff to be interesting. So I think he's doing a lot of this stuff for aesthetic reasons, not that he's actually trying to promote an idea or that he actually believes in a lot of the stuff that he shows. So I'm not trying to make the absurd claim that One Piece is some sort of Christian anime. Nor am I trying to say that Oda is the Antichrist. As a practicing Christian, I just want to look at the Christian things that I saw and noticed when I was watching the anime and reading the manga. Let's start with Adam, Eve, and the Tree of Knowledge. That's a good place to start, I suppose. Adam and Eve were the first man and woman to ever live. There's a tree in One Piece called the Adam Tree and the Eve Tree. The ship the Straw Hats sail on is called the Thousand Sunny and it was made from Adam wood, which comes from the Adam Tree. There's also the Sun Eve Tree located in Fishman Island. Fishman Island is located right under Mary Jawa, which is said to be the land of paradise. This could allude to heaven. So this could be a subtle way of saying that she was banished from paradise, as that's what happened in the Bible after she ate the fruit. Only of course, in One Piece, they often put a spin on these influences. The land of paradise isn't exactly Christian heaven. It's where the celestial dragons and emu reside. They're often referred to as gods, and according to Rob Lucci, they're the ones who created the world. However, they're actually the bad guys, as opposed to Christianity where God is the good guy. Similarly, the Seraphim in the Bible are God's highest ranking angels. The Seraphim of the world government are their strongest military weapon. There's a theory that the top of the Eve tree actually reaches to Mary Joa, which would make a lot of sense considering we don't actually know where the top of it goes. The theory further posits that the reason the Celestial Dragons, Emu, and the Gorosei have eternal life or seemingly eternal life is because they ate the fruit that bore from this tree. The Eve tree is seen as the tree of life. This contrasts the tree of knowledge which gave Adam and Eve a finite life. So not only do they have literal opposite functions, but they're also thematically seen in opposite ways. For Adam and Eve, having a finite life was bad. For the Gorosei and Emu, having an infinite life might be bad. There is the idea that all of these characters actually got their ability from lost fruit, but I'm just basing this off the theory that Ohara espoused in his mega theory. If this is true, then it would be very heavy Christian influence. What's also cool about Mary Joa is that it's at the center of the red line and the grand line, which divides the four seas. Funny enough, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 10, it says, A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. Let's talk about the Tree of Knowledge. As explained, the Celestial Dragons are known as the gods who created the world. But more accurately, it means that they formed the world. They control what people know and therefore what people believe. But it's not as though they actually created the world. They hide secrets from the rest of the world for some reason or another that hasn't been revealed to us. Oda flips the traditional story on its head by portraying the gods, the celestial dragons, as the bad guys and the people of Ohara as the good guys just interested in the truth. The celestial dragons don't spread love or anything that you would expect from the Christian god, but terror and abuse. The people of Ohara are the only people who are able to uncover the secrets of the world government because they are able to read poneglyphs. The Tree of Knowledge obviously represents the Biblical Tree of Knowledge where Eve ate the forbidden fruit which gave her the knowledge of good and evil. What may also be a reading from the text is that once they ate the fruit, they were able to determine for themselves what is good and what is evil as opposed to leaning to God for that knowledge. That's why the serpent said that they would be like gods. Determining right from wrong, determining what is shown and unshown, you see where I'm going with this. The One Piece Tree of Knowledge had more to do with learning more about the world, learning the truth about the world. The Celestial Dragons want to stop people from knowing the truth and believing in their propaganda, as opposed to Eden where Adam and Eve became disconnected from God, the truth, after eating the fruit. Emu isn't the Christian God, and the Celestial Dragons aren't saints. The entire world government conglomerate is full of a bunch of prideful false gods who act as though they are God. Similar to Adam and Eve, where they became like gods. And with the recent manga developments of Saturn looking like some kind of devil monster, it's entirely possible that Emu ends up being revealed as Satan. 
although this part is more speculative. Doflamingo symbolizes the devil. Doflamingo was born as a celestial dragon and then his father decided to give up his status, his godhood. Doflamingo is kicked out of heaven and sent to the earth. What's interesting is how Doflamingo tries to retain some of his godlike status in Dressrosa and in the larger New World. There's a lot more to be said on this, but to be concise, Doflamingo has had a hand in a lot of different New World operations. He's in some contacts with Kaido, Big Mom, Caesar, etc. Within Dressrosa, he also has an unquestioned rule. Now, his ability is Strings, which makes him literally and figuratively a puppet master. This is similar to Christianity, where Satan fell from heaven and is now trying to control people. It's also loosely related to the Christian idea of being a slave to sin, although that point is a bit of a stretch. Doflamingo is a heavenly deity, a celestial dragon, but acts in demonic ways, hence his epithet, the Heavenly Demon. The only part of this I have trouble understanding is the role of the Adam Tree. We know that Eve was a part of Adam, so maybe the Eve tree was made from the Adam tree? That's all I can really think of. It's also called the Treasure Tree, and of course the One Piece is a treasure, so maybe it has something to do with where the One Piece is, or what the One Piece is. Maybe the One Piece was just the first tree or something? I don't know, I'm just throwing ideas out now. I don't think we have enough information to really make any serious judgments, frankly. The apple is commonly suggested to be the forbidden fruit in Christianity. The fruit shows up a lot in One Piece. For example, Enel is shown eating an apple a lot, and the smile artificial devil fruits are apples. Enel is the antagonist of Skypiea, so it could be the case that Enel is a false god, and the apples he eats indicates that he has fallen, just as all of man has. The smile devil fruits are an artificial, cheap copy of the real devil fruits. It could be referencing the fact that the fruit Adam and Eve ate is a cheap copy of the proper fruits God gave Adam and Eve elsewhere. Speaking of devil fruits, this is another thing that people often comment about. The first seemingly Christian reference is the existence of devil fruits. In Christianity, of course, the devil is the bad guy, so it brings into question why these fruits are called devil fruits. There's a theory that the previous owners of the devil fruit have embers of their soul lingering inside the devil fruit even after they die. This could be sort of similar to how the devil can possess certain people, except this time it's more amoral and has nothing to do with actual demons. That's just a theory anyways, and if I'm being honest, that theory actually fits better with other religions that aren't Christianity. Unless you're literally Jesus Christ, reincarnation, physical reincarnation at least, isn't really an idea in Christianity. Souls in Christianity also don't reincarnate into different entities. Your soul either goes to heaven or hell. So, reincarnation honestly isn't even the best word to describe what's going on. The Devil Fruits could be a reference to Christianity, but we literally don't know what the Devil Fruits even are yet, other than the fact that they give the user magical abilities, of course. So, who knows, I don't think there's enough to really call this a Christian reference. If the theories are true, it's probably in reference to another religion that's not Christianity. And also, we literally don't know what it is. The next event I want to talk about is actually Zoro's introduction. This one's a bit more loose, I'll admit, but there is enough parallels that I think it's worth mentioning. Zoro is introduced by sacrificing his reputation and himself in order to protect a little girl. He's punished for this by hanging on a cross to be executed. Helmeppo even says that he would execute Zoro in three days, which could parallel Jesus dying and rising back from the dead after three days. In all fairness, Zoro was hanging on there for nine days being starved, but I think this is important to know anyways. Zoro paid the price for someone else's shortcomings by literally being forced to hang on a cross. The little girl even phrases it in a similar way. Jesus did something very similar when he died on the cross for all of our sins. And speaking of Jesus, let's talk about Jesus Burgess. The Christian reference behind his name actually I have trouble understanding. I suppose he fought for the Maramara Nomi, which was held by Ace, a dead man. I don't really know where to go with this. The most defining thing about Burgess's character is the fact that he's a rustler, which makes him very muscular. And speaking of muscular, that reminds me of today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by me, Paul Lupani. I wrote a book called Muscular Christianity, a case for spiritual and physical fitness. Buy it now, links in the description. There's like one or two One Piece references if you care. Back to Jesus, Jesus is the prophesied child of thousands of years who would come to bring a light to the world. 
All the way back in Adam and Eve, literally the third chapter of the Bible, he was prophesied. Joy Boy, similarly, is the one who will bring dawn to Wano and to the world. The sun god Nika is also someone who's been prophesied. Rogers said someone will be born who will surpass us to Whitebeard. And Whitebeard said to Blackbeard that he wasn't the one Roger was waiting for. Needless to say, Luffy seems to be the one to fill in that role. In Skypea, he's shown to literally answer people's prayers. He's implied to be this sort of transcendent figure, like a Jesus. Now, the prophesied child who comes in and saves the world is seen in a lot of stories, so it seems like it's sort of somewhat detached from its Christian roots. So one could argue that Oda isn't specifically drawing from Christianity for this, but there's more. In Wano, there's been a lot of Christian references as well. For one, Yasui died on the cross, which was very visually similar to Jesus dying on a cross. Odin's story also takes after Jesus. He suffered and died for Wano's sins. He was carrying a plate which is thematically similar to Christ carrying his cross. Odin had 9 followers, not quite 12, but if you do a little stretching, you can get it to 12. There's Izzo, Toki, and Shinobu was made an honorary follower which would get him up to 12. His downfall was due to being sold out by Kanjiro, one of his followers, similar to Judas betraying Jesus. Odin's death also sparked a generational change that was seen throughout the land of Wano similar to how Jesus' death radically changed the world. Yamato also treats the story of Odin as if it were a Bible, calling it by that name. Chapter 984 is literally titled, My Bible. There's a lot of symbolism in Wano. Bartholomew Kuma is named after one of Jesus' disciples, Bartholomew, and is always seen carrying a Bible. This never really made that much sense to me until I saw the recent chapters. In these recent chapters, we see Bartholomew Kuma's father who danced to Songs of Joy Boy. In Christian tradition, Bartholomew dies carrying out Jesus' will. And I expect something similar in One Piece as Kuma seems to be on his last legs and is likely going to die sacrificing himself for Joy Boy. He's also seen praying for the dead people he couldn't save at God Valley. This is a tradition that some Christians partake in, either because of purgatory, because of saintly intercession, or just out of respect. There's an entire scene in the Fishman Island arc where the Fishmen are forced to step on portraits of Orohime. This is based on actual historical events that took place in Japan around the Edo period. Religious authorities of the Tokugawa Shogunate of Japan require suspected Christians to step on portraits of Jesus and the Virgin Mary to demonstrate that they were not members of that outlawed religion. The next character I want to talk about is Mihawk. Mihawk's sword is roughly shaped like a cross and he wears a cross necklace. He seems to also be modeled after the Spanish Inquisitors. This is in contrast with Zoro who has a lot of hellish and demonic connotations around him. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that he's also titled the King of Hell and that a lot of his root moves refer to some sort of underworld. What's interesting is that Zoro also says his name will reach the heavens. In all honesty, I'm not exactly sure how this all fits, but I think it's worth mentioning. However, similar to the Devil Fruits, Zoro isn't really based on Christianity, he's based around Buddhism. I don't know much about that religion, so I can't really say too much on it. But I think you're being way too quick to jump the gun if you think this is like some crazy anti-Christian message. Interestingly, one of Zoro's most iconic attacks is Purgatory Onigiri. If you're a Catholic, you'd understand that Purgatory is where your souls go into to cleanse themselves before they go into heaven. So this could be seen as Zoro's way of mercifully damaging you. Sort of like a, hey, I don't want to hurt you, but it kind of has to be done. Purgatory is a place, broadly speaking, where people endure a lot of pain. And Zoro's whole character is about taking as much pain as possible and still surviving, so it just kind of fits thematically. Notably, he used this against Hyozo and against Killer. He was far stronger than Hyozo and sort of felt kind of bad for beating on him so easily, so this does sort of confirm my theory. And same with Killer, after he got his third sword, quote unquote, he completely outmatched Killer, and then, and then he just made quick work of him. He had no ill feelings towards these people, but he had to get the job done. A Christian way to explain his demonic presence is to contrast him with Emu and the Celestial Dragons and the people I've been talking about before. We know that Emu, the Celestial Dragons and all that, that they're the gods, right? So then since Zoro is depicted as being demonic, even being the king of hell, potentially this is because of his strong opposition to the gods. 
We know that he attacked the Celestial Dragon before he even knew who it was. In fact, he was even ready to kill Charlos, which is more than Luffy did. Now, we know the Ds are the natural enemies of God. And with all of that evidence being accumulated, you also have to look into Ashura. If you look at what Ashura actually means, it means enemy of the gods, according to the second paragraph of Wikipedia. Now, I believe Ashura is a Hindu thing, and I'm talking about Christianity in this, but it's still important to note that. So now, with all of this being taken into account, it is weirdly set up, weirdly perfectly set up for Zoro to be a member of the D-Clan. Which, if this whole ramble is true, then Zoro kind of has to be a member of the D-Clan based on what we know at least. But, I don't subscribe to this, one, because we don't actually know everything about the D-Clan, we just know that they're natural enemies of God. And second, because we know that Zoro is actually a part of the Ku Klux Klan. The Straw Hats and Laboon also have similarities to Jonah and the Whale. Well, it's a large fish in the Bible, but whatever. The Straw Hats are eaten up and spit out by a whale that seems to have its own environment inside of it. When the Straw Hats were in Laboon, they got a log pose from Crocus. This gave them more clarity on where they should be going. When Jonah was in the whale, he repented to God for trying to run away from him for so long, and he also got a sort of spiritual clarity. The Noah on Fishman Island, also known as the Ship of Promise, represents the Ark of Noah that Noah built in the Bible. Joy Boy told them to keep good care of the Ark, and it said that Luffy is going to destroy Fishman Island. So it's implied that all the Fishman will hop along that Ark and leave when the time comes. The Noah in One Piece is also propelled by animals. So it's kind of interesting because in this case, the animals are actually saving the people, as opposed to in the Bible where Noah's family, the people, are saving the animals. In Whole Cake Island, we're introduced to Mother Caramel through Big Mom's backstory. She may possibly be named after the Camelites, a Christian order in Japan known for selling sweets. She may also be a reference to the lost children of Francoism, as there were children who were abducted by the Spanish Catholic Church. She's basically a nun who sells children. This one is also kind of loose, but Jaguar D. Saul's name bears similarity to King Saul in the Bible but also Saul, who was persecuting Christians, who eventually changed his name to Paul. This Saul, after seeing the light of God, literally and figuratively, was completely transformed to the point that he changed his name to Paul. Jaguar D. Saul could be a reference to that in that he was unable to figure out the true history of the world, so he remained Saul, someone who's oblivious to the truth. The world government searching for Ace was reminiscent of the time Pharaoh and the governor of Bethlehem searched for Moses and Jesus respectively. In all three cases, the powers that be killed all children two years and younger. Another really loose parallel that's kind of just become a story trope in general is the sort of David and Goliath imagery in Luffy's battles. There always seems to be some panels that highlight just how insignificantly small Luffy is compared to his opponent. And once Luffy overcomes them, he stands atop of them, similar to when David killed Goliath. Speaking of David and Goliath, Usopp is seen as an underdog in a lot of his fights, and he uses a slingshot. This could be a reference to how David famously used a slingshot to knock out Goliath. Consider also the fact that Elbaf is a land the Straw Hats are likely to go to. Consider also the fact that Elbaf is a land of giants. I think you now understand my point. Elbaf is Usopp's Ark. Further to that point, the two famous David statues from the Renaissance, one from the early Renaissance depict a small and girlish frame, and the other from the late Renaissance depicts a mighty, cut, and sexualized warrior. This could be a reference to pre-timeskip Usopp and post-timeskip Usopp, respectively. And finally, Frankie's bulls are named Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe Oda's putting a spit on it because those bulls are quite loyal to Frankie despite the fact that, biblically, Sodom and Gomorrah were less faithful. The final, final fact here has to do with hockey. It turns out hockey is actually a concept taken from the Bible. 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, what is hockey, other than the immaterial power used to destroy people? With this in mind, you can actually scale Jesus' hockey at least two tiers above the One Piece top tiers. This is because Romans 8.37 says, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. This means that we, as we are alive right now, 
are at least one tier above Conqueror's hockey users like Shanks, Luffy, Zoro, etc. by sheer association with him who loved us. This scales Jesus' hockey at least two tiers above One Piece's strongest. So based off what we know, it goes God hockey, greater than Christian hockey, greater than Conqueror's hockey. If you want to know how you can attain such a high level of hockey and share a portion of God hockey, buy my book. And that'll be it for me in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and buy my book. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you all next time. Alright, peace.